CGIAR Research Program on Rice Agri-Food Systems, Rice Director, Bass Bauman. What are the objectives of the CGIAR Research Program on Rice Agri-Food Systems, Rice? This is the second phase. Um, in the first six years we made tremendous progress in fostering that partnership, in getting people to work with each other and exchange ideas. Now in the next phase we are doing, we are building on, on the strength. We continue doing what we are best at, developing new varieties, new management technologies, policy information. Um, but we will be expanding scope. We will be moving into the whole rice value chain, where before we worked mainly with farmers and getting a better yield and more product. Now we are looking at how does that move through the value chain? Can we improve the connection between farmers and markets? Can we reduce post-harvest losses? Can we add value to the rice by having, making a rice that's more, non, more nutritious? that we use the, um, the straw and the residues better. So we look at the whole value chain, at the, the, the from plate to spade, no, from spade to plate, but also the, the feedback loops from the plate to the spade. What do the people want on their plate? They want nutritious rice, they want quality rice. So how does that feedback into the development of new varieties and working with the farmers. Another major difference, new area we are embarking in, is we start look at farming systems. Farmers don't only get their income out of growing rice, they grow other crops. They may even have fish in their ponds, very important in a rice environment where you have a lot of water and fish, fish like water. But also we look at um, other um, crops like beans and pulses, vegetables, very important for a healthy um, and diverse diet. So we will we'll be looking in areas where rice is the dominant crop, that is our bread and butter, but will we be expanding out? How can we help farmers grow other crops that improve their livelihood and their nutrition status? So we will widen out in farm, farming systems, and we will widen out in terms of complete rice value chains, connecting spade to plate. Rice is a forward-looking program. What future scenarios is it envisaging? Yes, so very important is that we look indeed into the future, what are the major drivers of change? And we all know the main ones. We know there is climate change. We know the population increasing. And a lot of that population, they want to eat rice. In Asia, because they used to eat rice. In Africa, because it's a new crop, it's easy to eat, it's easy to prepare, and people like it. So they want to eat more rice. But then there are new drivers of change that are more socio-economic. We see a lot of economic development in a number of countries, in Asia, but also in Africa, where we see that people, some segments of poor people are moving into a middle income bracket, especially in Asia. They get more money to spend and they want to spend that on better quality of rice. They want to spend it on rice that is safe, so they want safety um, um, guarantees. They also start to be concerned about the environmental issues. So we are looking forward. What does it mean that we are seeing a shift in the um, in in um, in um, population dynamics and in poor people moving into a middle income bracket another major change is that we will see more poor people living in urban cities they are migrating out of the countryside living on the cities so what does that mean how do we make sure that the poor people in the cities get access to good quality rice people moving out of the countryside Finding a job in the city means that we have less and less people, and that's especially true in Asia, left to do the farming. So we ask who is gonna do who is gonna do the farming? Who will produce the rice of the future? Well, this is actually maybe an opportunity and not a threat. Because what this will do, it will one increase the labor 
cost in the countryside and that will encourage people to mechanize. Once you mechanize, you increase labor productivity, you get a higher income. Second, when people move out of the countryside, there are less people farming and they can farm larger areas. So instead of being a poor farmer, manually transplanting on one hectare and scraping your livelihood together, you can start looking at maybe in the future that farmer can have 10 or 20 hectares. And she can actually engage a contractor to do mechanical transplanting. So we have all kinds of opportunities actually because of this what's called structural transformation. People moving from countryside to city, more um, mechanization, etc. as opportunities. In Africa it's still mostly another picture. There we still have a lot of young people in rural areas and they need a job. So there actually it is a different situation. There we want to develop technologies that help young people find a good um, livelihood in the rural sector. And that is probably not by giving them a hoe and telling them to go farming manually. No, it's helping them to become business entrepreneurs, to actually have skills in marketing, skills in adopting new technologies that actually modernize the farming system. So we are looking forward, modernizing farmers, looking at biological drives of change, climate change, salinity intrusion, drought, but also opportunities that come out of the um, economic developments that we see happening. For more information, visit www.africarice.org.